was a medical doctor and as a surgeon with um, knowledge of craniofacial surgery, um, I was in a position to examine the star child skull in detail and note the um, many anomalies which differentiate it from a normal human skull. When you look at the skull, it's really quite dramatic. If you look at it from the front, you immediately see that the head is large, the face is small, the orbits are more of an almond shape, the brow ridges are missing, the overall appearance is uh, very uh, unique and very strange. When you look at the side views, there are again dramatic differences. In the side views, uh, you can see that the morphology of the back of the skull is uh, really quite different. The human adult skull that was found with the star child skull was that of a cradle boarded human. And there is a flattened area, but it's much higher up on the back. Anyone that reviews those photographs will see that the flattened area in the star child skull uh, starts about midpoint and goes down to the frame and magnum. When you look at the skull, you, you can see uh, a, a large amount of what I would call uh, bossing. They're, they're quite prominent. And uh, when you look at it uh, on the top, you can see a, a dip uh, where the sagittal suture is, which you do not see in, a, in an adult human or in a child. And there are uh, many other features which are present. Uh, for instance, if you look at the uh, orbit closely, you can see not only missing brow ridges and a different shape to the orbital margins, but when you look at the back, there is what is known as the orbital fissure, where the vessels and nerves run through to the eye. And in a, in a human, that is an L-shaped opening. In the star child, it is straight. So there are um, other remarkable differences. The, the area at the side of the skull where the chewing muscles go down from, from there down to the jaw, it, this area is much smaller. Um, and um, when you look at the back again, you will see that the uh, Indian in the nuchal ridge where the neck muscles attach is much less prominent than in the human adult. Well, there are a number of reasons why this is not a hydrocephalic. The pathology of hydrocephalus is that uh, there is a system of ventricles within the brain which are like openings where the cerebrospinal fluid is produced. It normally would drain out into the spinal cord. Um, if there's a blocked valve, it is unable to drain out and it gradually accumulates, which raises the internal pressure, the intracranial pressure, uh, which flattens the brain against the skull uh, and, and basically blows the skull up like a balloon. So you end up with a very rounded skull. This is not a rounded skull. I've already mentioned that there is a depression along the sagittal suture that runs from the front to the back of the skull that would not be present uh, in a, a hydrocephalic patient. Uh, normally, in a human, there are vascular markings on the inner table of the skull because there are blood vessels that run between the brain and the, the inner table of the skull. In hydrocephalus, these are absent because of the increased intracranial pressure, uh, which obliterates those markings uh, as the brain presses against the inner table. And Dr. Brzezinski uh, noted that those vascular markings were present on the x-rays, uh, which rules out the possibility of this being a hydrocephalus patient. Um, it's also interesting to note that hydrocephalus deforms the skull, but it does not in any way cause deformation of any kind in the face. So all of the facial, facial abnormalities, the fact that the face is small, the fact that the orbits are different, 
uh, is inconsistent with hydrocephalus because in hydrocephalus the orbits would be normal, the face would be a normal size. So again, uh, this is not hydrocephalus. Dr. Robinson is just one of many experts who have been involved with the Star Child skull over the years. You can read his report on the skull at starchildproject.com and learn more about our ongoing research. Since Dr. Robinson first saw the skull, we have been able to conduct tests ranging from sophisticated scans to DNA testing, and in almost every case we have discovered more evidence that the skull is not human. The skull is only 900 years old, yet we know it lived and interacted with humans. The last humanoid species apart from us died out over 13,000 years ago, so a new species at only 900 years is a very big deal. We hope that further research will unlock the rest of this skull's mysteries and open the door to all of the academic, biotech, and medical benefits that this remarkable specimen can represent. Visit StarChildProject.com to learn more.